Hi, I'm Tom Grayley, and this is uh, my house. It's a 1,200 square foot Berkeley bungalow. To my right is my electric car, and on my roof is my solar panels that charge the electric car. We started our electrification process of the house in 2016, doing a little bit at a time. We're almost there, almost completed it, so uh, let me take you on a tour. This is our 200 amp service panel. There's another service panel in the basement that was part of the original 100 amp service. We had to upgrade to 200 amps when we installed the heat pump heating and cooling system. And so now we're going to go up on the roof and we're going to let the drone take us up there where we'll see uh, the solar array and the heat pump. Our first electrification step was the solar array. We started with a 2KW array and later added another KW because we converted to an electric clothes dryer and added an electric vehicle charging station. Our latest electrification step was installing a heat pump for heating and cooling our house. This is the compressor. We will see the air handler when we go into the basement. The reason we put the heat pump on the roof was because we are on a very narrow lot. The city required that the unit be set back from the house and we didn't have the space. We could have put it in the back of the house, but that would have meant a very long refrigerant line running through living space. So the roof was the answer. The light colored roof reflects sunlight and helps keep the house cool. Below that roof is our new R44 insulation, which is doing a great job. In order to install the insulation, we upgraded the knob and tube wiring, removed the old insulation, cleaned out any debris, and then blew in the new material. Blue Rock Home handled the cleanup and the blow-in and did a great job. So R44 insulation really is quite thick. This is the hatch or the door to the attic in order to get up, and that's how tall they had to make it in order to put R44 in the attic. Since a lot of the participants came to this presentation via the Bring Back the Natives Garden Tour, I'm gonna to take a minute to describe our garden. In addition to producing our own power, we like to produce our own food. The garden is a mix of edible plants and ornamentals. The summer vegetables include tomato, pepper, garlic, lettuce, beets, eggplant, beans, and rhubarb. The winter garden usually includes cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, and Brussels sprouts. We also grow spices like oregano, French tarragon, parsley, cilantro, and chives. For berries, we have strawberry, blueberry, alala berry, and raspberry. The trees are apple and persimmon, and I've started to replace some of the ornamentals with natives. So far, I have skullcap, checker bloom, and California poppies used for ground cover in the front. Okay, let's take a look in the kitchen. This is the one point where we haven't fully converted to electricity. We still have a gas stove, but we are ready for an induction stove because we have already installed our 40 amp electrical outlet when we did our upgrade to the 200 amp service. Right now we continue to use an induction uh, cooktop unit here and electric teapot as well as the microwave. While most of the food preparation takes place here, we do have another spot where we brew kombucha. It turns out that this is the warmest place in the house and the kombucha brewing process really is facilitated here. The registers you see are, are original but the ducts were replaced in about 1990 when the furnace was replaced. This house, when it was built in 1929, had a furnace which might have burned coal. At least it was a conversion from a coal furnace into a gas furnace. And that furnace continued in use until 1990 when it was upgraded to a modern gas uh, forced air furnace. We use about one therm a month in gas usage. It now costs more for the uh, gas service than it does for the, uh, the gas itself. Our next stop is the laundry room and the utility room. 
Let's go to the laundry room first. In 2017, we had a bit of a gas leak in the, in the laundry room. There's a gas line that fed a very old gas dryer, and uh, unfortunately, the gas line is buried underneath the concrete, so it was going to be very expensive to replace. So we decided to upgrade to an all-electric dryer. We already had an outlet, so it was an easy upgrade. Uh, the dryer works very well. The only issue is it does use a lot of electricity because it is a, a resistance dryer. So let's head to the utility room. This is the utility room. This unit is our air handler. The heat pump compressor on the top of the roof sends either cold or hot refrigerant down into this unit. The unit transfers the heat from the refrigerant or the coolness from the refrigerant into the house into the air through the ducts. We also installed a HEPA air filter. The air filter has been a real savior during the smoky season and fire season that we have. It absolutely clears the house of all that smoke and makes us feel much, much better. This unit is our 50 gallon heat pump water heater. 99% of the time it operates in heat pump only mode. On the occasion when my extended family comes to visit, we put it into hybrid mode. And at that point, the, it uses not only the heat pump, but also resistance heat to meet the demand. And one last step before we conclude this. This is the electric vehicle charging station. And it, right now it's already plugged into the car. And so we're taking the power from the solar panels and putting it right into the battery. It took us a little over three years to accomplish what I've just showed you. Uh, our utility bills are, have either been slightly negative or just a few tens of dollars per year. Our clothes are dried, our food is cooked, our water is hot, and the temperature of our house is either cool or warm or however we'd like it. We're very close to being a carbon-free home. You can do it too.